Well, good morning, everyone, or afternoon, or whatever time it is in your time zone. I'm Ron Brown. This is Tech for Senior. I'll be your host today. It is a gorgeous drop-down day, day on Vancouver Island, where I live, this little island off the west coast of Canada. It is, it's is—it's going to be a great day. We've had a, a fun week. I know everybody was excited about last week when we talked about uh, all the options you have for for telephones we have a home phone and as as a result of that we've had a brainstorming brainstorming ideas and we want to do this again because it was so popular so i just wanted to announce that on june the 10th we will be doing another similar show and it will be on uh choosing a streaming service for your tv and we'll all give our own our own opinions on that so that will occur and that will be the special presentation and it will be on June the 10th. So that's that should be exciting. Isn't everybody excited about that? I think that's going to be great. It should be a fun it should be a it should be a fun one to do. I think that'll be that'll be that'll be exciting. For we have a good show for you today. We have a big show for you today. It's all Bob Gustisha. I think we're going to call it the Bob Gustisha show. Uh <laughs> Bob's of course going to do a security news update. I'm going to talk about cable or fiber. Uh those manuals, all those manuals that you've always looked for, Huey's going to tell us how to find those. Bob's going to talk about um, Copilot, Gemini, and AI advances. And then he's got a little gem at the very, very end that I don't think everyone's seen, but it is a really cool thing that you can do with your browser. He's going to talk about that. And of course, Ray has his music outro. I'm going to talk about, you know, <clears throat> Gail and I go for go for lunch every every. Friday and it's our lunch date. And when we go away in the morning, all the robotic black, I have three robotic vacuums in the house. They all, they all run. And I say, well, I'm so tired after that morning because I had to do all the vacuuming. But in fact, the, the robotic vacuums all run when we're away. And I've learned a lot. And the first feature today on our premier educational series will be how to choose a robotic vacuum and what features you need. And that will be the first one. And then, of course, Bob's going to talk on the wise, the wise doorbell and VoIP notification. And then he's also going to talk on SSD myths and why you really should get an SSD. So as I said, this is sort of the Bob Castisha show rather than Tech for Senior. Well done, Bob. Well done. Excellent. For those of you who are wondering what was happening today, of course, I want to remind you that the newsletter came out on Saturday and we would like to thank the Glendora Computers Seniors Computer Club, the uh, Geeks on Tour and of course the Central Florida Computer Society for sponsoring our newsletter. So please please support those organizations and uh, and 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 thank them thank you thank you thank you for for, for supporting us uh, on our newsletter. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, please do so. Don't forget, this Thursday, we'll be online again for our Tech for Senior Live. If you haven't come and watched our Thursday show, it is a fun show. We we really enjoy it. And we, we talk about all the tech news of the week. And it's it's lots of fun. It's a very popular show, particularly on the replay. So we'll have, it should be fun this week. Uh, lots of news, lots of good news. Um, I'd like to thank... Uh, Madeline Wayne Win for Wayne Wayne for her generous donation this week. We still have our uh, donation page going, and if you do have some after taxes, <laughs> you have a little extra money, please drop it in the in the folder there, and it'll be just great. And that's that always helps us. All right, uh, let me just introduce everybody that's here today. Of course, everybody knows Huey Popluck. Huey, what's what have you got going this week? Unmute yourself. It, it works better that way, doesn't it? <laughs> Last week, I had a real busy week. This coming week is going to be uh, just some normal things. Tech for Senior, Tech for Senior Live. And I've got a lot of catch-up work to do. All no right. mustard, just ketchup. Just ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Bob, are you, are, you, uh, are you planning the same number of videos? Are you keep producing all those videos? <laughs> As long as the ideas keep popping in my head and as long as I run into things that I think other people ought to know about, I'm going to keep doing videos. And I happen to enjoy doing videos. 
So we were talking. So I want everyone to give Bob a big round of applause. What? Here's the deal. Well, just hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before the show started, we were. He, Bob was telling us how he made the last video you're going to see today. He made it using clips out of out of Zoom, and you know we were all in awe of what he did. And it's sort of really cool technology. So if I would like Bob to make a little video about how he does this. So let's everyone give Bob a big round of applause in advance for the video that he's going to make to show us how to use clips in Zoom, right? Let's give him a big and then he'll 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 get that video made for us. So I'm I'm sort of excited about that. But watch today on there you go. On the last on the last video, he's going to play a little three-minute video before the music section. And he made this using clips and zoom so this is this is a really cool feature and it'll it's i think you'll you'll find it interesting and it's super easy to do so bob see you've got your applause already so we expect this coming super, soon super easy to do if you know what you're doing you're right <laughs> exactly you're going to tell us how to do it <laughs> all right and ray what's happening in your neck of the woods well, like I don't have enough to do, so Carol and I have gotten involved with the Genealogy Association in our oh. local community. So yesterday I gave a, or the weekend rather, I gave a presentation on how genealogy and adoption can come together. So it was pretty well received and I enjoyed doing it. Just took a lot of time to to put it all together. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent. I, I'm sure that's a very rewarding topic to talk about. A lot of those people are really interested in that. Yep, it was. It was well received. Good. Excellent. All right. And of course, we have Chris and Jim Gould here today. Welcome and unmute and say hello. <laughs> you hear us? We have, okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. There all, we are. <laughs> all is good. Beautiful in South Florida today. Looking forward to learning something. <laughs> all right. So he was list I was listening to um uh Leo Laporte this morning and he was he was yakking away about how they're probably gonna close their physical brick and mortar studio and he was he was going to be doing his the, their show, their tech for, uh, their what do they call it, Ask the Tech Guy show. They're gonna be doing it live, but they're gonna be moving it into either Leo's house or the other fella's house, and they're gonna be using this new software called StreamYard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i thought leo you gotta watch tech for senior live you gotta watch our show a little. i mean i was thinking maybe i'll send them a little note about that new software called that's of course we've been doing that for three years so maybe he anyway. can use my poem to for his show also. yeah yeah that's right you can. <laughs> yeah, i'll just do a rewrite for leo <laughs> that's right and listen the other thing you is think that'll work for you yeah <laughs> <laughs> So the other one is now Bill James isn't here, but he's not here because he has a doctor's appointment and it's not, he didn't get hit by a tornado. So I know many of you are wondering with all the tornadoes going around there in Oklahoma, but he's, I think he's okay, but he's not here. He's just not here because he's got another appointment. That's so, so anyway, yeah, all right. Uh, all right, Bob, do you want to take it away? Let's get going here. Here is my security news roundup for the week ending April 26, 2024. The world's leading AI companies pledge to protect the safety of children online. Leading artificial intelligence companies including OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, Meta, and others have jointly pledged to prevent their AI tools from being used to exploit children and generate child sexual abuse material. The initiative was led by child safety group Thorn and All Tech is Human, a nonprofit focused on responsible tech. Sam Altman, OpenAI CEO, Microsoft Chief Satya Nadala, Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai are just some notables that are joining the government's Artificial Intelligence Safety and Security Board, according to the Wall Street Journal. Read more at Engadget.com. Microsoft warns North Korean hackers 
turn to AI-fueled cyber espionage. Microsoft has revealed that North Korean-linked state-sponsored cyber actors have begun to use artificial intelligence to make their operations more effective and efficient. They are learning to use tools powered by AI large language models to make their operations more efficient and effective, the tech giant said in its latest report on East Asia hacking groups. The company specifically highlighted a group named Emerald Sleet, also known as Kamuski or TA-427, which has been observed using LLMs to bolster spear phishing efforts aimed at Korean Peninsula experts. Read more at thehackernews.com. Potential TikTok ban becomes law in the U.S. TikTok might be one of the biggest social media platforms, but it has faced significant scrutiny for its ownership by ByteDance in China. While the app is not even available in China, there's a different version of TikTok there called Douyin that hasn't stopped governments from looking to ban it over national security concerns. The United States has now passed a law that could ban TikTok from the entire country. The foreign adversary designation means that unless the app is sold to a third-party company, companies will be banned from the distributing TikTok to American users. Read more at howtogeek.com. TikTok says it will fight U.S. ban or forced sale after bill passes. TikTok head of public policy for the Americas, Michael Beckerman, told staff in a memo after the vote that the bill was unconstitutional and TikTok would fight it in the courts. At the stage that the bill is signed, we will move to the courts for a legal challenge, he wrote in the memo, which was first reported by the tech news website, The Information. Beckerman claimed that the bill violated the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, which protects freedom of speech, will continue to fight as this legislation is a clear violation of the First Amendment rights of the 170 million Americans on TikTok, he wrote. Read more at theguardian.com. GitHub abused to host malware and create download links seemingly affiliated with Microsoft. Malicious actors are actively abusing the file upload logic in GitHub's comments to host and spread malware. The malware can be distributed via automatically generated download links that contain the name and owner of a repository used to create the URL. Ironically, in exactly this manner, Microsoft, the owner of the developer platform, was abused by hackers who created a false affiliation between the malware and the company. However, as bleeping computers' investigations into the topic uncovered, any other trusted developer or company can be abused in the very same way. Read more at neowin.net. Police chiefs call for a solution to access encrypted data in serious crime cases. European police chiefs said that the complementary partnership between law enforcement agencies and the technology industry is at risk due to end-to-end -to -end encryption. They called on the industry and governments to take urgent action to ensure public safety across social media platforms. Privacy measures currently being rolled out, such as end-to-end -end encryption, will stop tech companies from seeing any offending that occurs on their platforms, Europol said. It will also stop law enforcement's ability to obtain and use this evidence in investigations to prevent and prosecute the most serious crimes, such as child sexual abuse, human trafficking, drug smuggling, homicides, economic crime, and terrorism offenses. Read more at thehackernews.com. GPT-4 can exploit zero-day security vulnerabilities all by itself, a new study finds. 
Researchers recently demonstrated the ability to manipulate LLM and chatbot technology for highly malicious purposes, such as propagating a self-replicating computer worm. A new study now sheds light on how GPT-4, the most advanced chatbot currently available on the market, can exploit extremely dangerous security vulnerabilities simply by examining the details of a flaw. According to the study, LLMs have become increasingly powerful, yet they lack ethical principles to guide their actions. Findings revealed that GPT-4 was able to exploit 87% of the tested vulnerabilities, whereas other models, including GPT-3.5, had a success rate of 0%. Read more at techspot.com. Generative AI arise in the gene editing world of CRISPR. Now new AI technology is generating blueprints for microscopic biological mechanisms that can edit your DNA, pointing to a future where scientists can battle illnesses and diseases with even greater precision and speed than they can today. Described in a research paper published on Monday by a Berkeley, California startup called Profluent, the technology is based on the same methods that drive ChatGPT. These gene editors are based on Nobel Prize winning methods involving biological mechanisms called CRISPR. Technology based on CRISPR is already changing how scientists study and fight illnesses and disease providing a way of altering genes that cause hereditary conditions such as sickle cell anemia and blindness. Read more at reddit.com. This week's must see on my YouTube channel. Predictions of near future advances in AI directly from the mouths of Copilot and Gemini. Please watch my video on that topic by following the link listed. Did you know? Google.com is the most popular website on the internet. Visitors spend an average of 15 minutes and 13 seconds per day searching the website. They might look fluffy and ethereal, but clouds are quite heavy. The average cumulus cloud, the big white cotton candy-like ones you see on nice days, weigh 1.1 million pounds, or 500 million grams. Charles Darwin and Abraham Lincoln were both born on the same day, February 12, 1809. Just thought you might want to know. What to do with a mistake? Recognize it, admit it, learn from it, forget it. Thanks to Dean Smith. If you're having fun, that's when the best memories are built, thanks to Simone Biles. And that's a wrap of this week's Security News Roundup. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye, and thanks for watching and listening. Thanks, Bob. As we were we were talking earlier before the show started, the other thing that is happening this week, we'll talk about it maybe on Thursday, is DJI drones. And there's a uh, a bill now in Congress that that will be placing DJI drones under the Secure and Trusted Communication Networks Act. And this will limit them from any access to U.S. networks and place heavy limits on the sale and action of DJI drones. Which is which is a topic we're going to talk about on Thursday. Interesting. So if you have a DJI drone, I don't know. Anyway, uh, there's lots of interesting stuff happening. All right, uh, let me talk uh, about cable versus fiber. Cable versus fiber. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we make videos to help seniors understand the most cost-effective internet solution. So today I want to look at cable versus fiber. This past month, after 30 years of being a cable subscriber, I switched to fiber. Let me explain why I did. If you do like this video, we'd sure appreciate that 
like, and subscribe. Everybody at Tech for Senior is a volunteer and it would really help the channel. Thanks so much. Let's get on with the difference between cable and fiber and which one you should choose. Now it's important for you to realize that the transmission lines or the large lines on the telephone poles that move data are all fiber optic. So the only difference between fiber optic cable and fiber optic in your home is the distance between the telephone pole and your home. So on a cable service, you'll have, yes, you have this cable piece that goes from the telephone pole to your home, and this connects to a cable modem. On a fiber optic system, you have the fiber optic line coming from the telephone pole to your home and then hooking to a fiber optic modem. So you, I'm sure, understand that the two systems are quite different though, because fiber optic runs on light, whereas cable runs on power, juice. You know, it goes through copper, copper coil, copper wires. Now well, let's look at cable first. Cable is probably a little more prevalent than fiber optic services. But of course, as we've discussed in the United States and Canada, particularly in the US, it's dying quickly. Now let's look at how cable works so you have a good understanding of the limitations. So let's look at how the data flows on cable to your cable modem. Of course, it comes across the transmission lines, down through cable into your house and attaches to your cable modem. In order for your computer to understand the data, it has to have some software and we call this software DOCSIS. Now the version of DOCSIS that you have in your cable modem probably is DOCSIS 3 or 3.1. You can't update your cable modem as it is a chip in that box. So as we are moving now to DOCSIS 4, your internet service providers, your cable companies will be upgrading those modems to the DOCSIS 4.0, which should give you a bit better speed. Now, when we talk about cable speed, what we're talking about is asymmetry. In other words, the download speed is not equal to the upload speed. For example, if you have a one gigabit cable connection, the download speed will be one gigabit but the upload speed will be about 100 megabits, depending on how the service is organized. Isn't that odd? Like, why can't it be the same? And the answer to that is DOCSIS. Because when this was created many, many years ago, things were a lot different on the internet. You know how when we go to a website and we say, hey, we want to see that website, then the website downloads that information on our computer. The upload is a tiny little request most of the stuff that we do is downloading. Well, this all changed uh, many, about four or five years ago with broadcasting on internet. Uh, we all do this now and we have a lot of communication skills that we use. And this all has made uploading more important. This has been a big challenge for, of course, cable because we want to increase that upload speed. Now let's look at fiber optic cable. Well, fiber optic cable, of course, is on the telephone line. And as it moves from the telephone line to your house, it will go by a fiber optic cable, not by coaxial cable. Now, if you look at this diagram, you'll see the street that I live on. Well, I'm very fortunate because the fiber optic cable comes down the left side of the street, which is the side of the street my house is on. That is great. And if you look at the box here, you'll see that it is a service outlet that has actually the fiber company and the cable company sharing that box. Now, in the newer subdivisions, that these are separate boxes, but in mine, it is there. Now, if you look down the side of my lawn, you'll see this is where I've placed underground conduit. About 20 years ago, when we recabled my area, I actually put one and a half inch conduit down that side of my house and you'll see it comes over uh, under the sidewalk uh, onto the side of the house and that's uh, there is an underground about an inch and a half diameter uh, PVC pipe. This made it real easy for them to run 
the fiber optic cable from the service box out there uh, into my house. And then it is an easy run because the studio is just above the box on the outside of the house. So it was easy to connect. So if you look at the outside of my house, you'll see that I have the old POTS line, the fiber line, and the cable line. So I can switch back and forth between fiber and cable as I want. Now I have to tell you that the main reason that I switched from cable to fiber was cost. I saved $1,800 uh, in the year by shopping around and negotiating a better deal with the fiber optic company. And I would encourage you to really have a good look at this. But in the United States, you really want to look at 5G home internet service because that's where you're going to get the best deal. I didn't really have that option in Canada, but I had a really great deal with the fiber company and was able to get uh, to save quite a bit of money. And that's primarily why I made the change. But what you have to remember is the limitation on cable. Now, uh, the maximum that our cable services are providing at present is 1.5 gigabits of download speed. Now that may get a little bit better as, as time goes on and maybe new versions of docs has come out. But on our fiber system, I can order up one gigabit, two gigabits, four gigabits, or eight gigabits on the fiber service that I have. It's my own connection and it and allows me great flexibility and a lot of increasing speed if I want. So let's just review the fiber connection speed. I now have symmetrical. Yes, fiber is symmetrical. There is one gig down and one gig up. Now let's look at the equipment that they use to install. In this diagram, you'll see, of course, that this is the fiber modem, different than our cable modem. Then you'll see to the right of that are two pieces of equipment. There's the flat piece, which of course is the router that they connected to the modem. And this router has about uh, 10 high-speed ports on it, so I was able to get rid of my old switch. Now, the cylindrical thing on top is actually a 5G three-band mesh router. This is a separate piece that connects on, and this uh, offers the uh, a, a mesh router system for my house because I have a second floor, and we were concerned about would there be enough broadcasting power on the second floor. And in this diagram, you'll see the, uh, the other mesh access upstairs, and this broadcasts out on the upper floor. Now, my home phone was, uh, is connected actually to the bottom router. There's a phone port in there that I just plug my home phone in, and uh, that I had them the, uh, the phone number simply ported over at no charge. And in fact, the home phone is included in the, in the package deal I have. So the installation went in two parts. There was, of course, the first crew that came and they connected the outside uh, uh, outside connections. They were really happy because I gave them an easy access through the uh, through the PVC pipe, and I had even left a pull line through there, and they were easily able to get the um, get the fiber from the service connection along the uh, along my property, and then under the um, sidewalk into the side of my house. There was then a second man came. He's a very interesting fella. He was the guy I joke with you. I said I wanted to help him. He said that's extra. <laughs> anyway, he uh, he was from India. He had a bunch of degrees. He was a very sharp individual and able to uh, connect. He did the inside inside connection to the house and set it all up. So what are my feelings after using it for about a month? Well, I would say that it is much faster than cable. That increased upload speed really does make a difference and I'm pretty happy with that. Other than that, I really don't notice a lot of difference. All my software works the same. The phone works the same. Um, the only thing is, of course, I don't have to pay as much money as I did when I paid for cable services. You know, we live in incredible times. If you think of the technological revolution that we are 
living through right now. I guess, you know, we read as, as young students about the Industrial Revolution that took place in Europe over a hundred years. Think of the technology revolution that we're going through and we're actually living in it and it's taking a very short time. The first, of course, was the discovery or the creation of the internet. That certainly changed our lives. This, the second came along was, of course, the cell phone, another marvel of technology, which we really can't live without. But the third thing that's happening now that you will all experience, of course, is this artificial intelligence. We're always talking lots about it. We're doing lots of shows about it. And this is really going to change our lives. The problem is we just don't have that I've got to have an application, that one application that would make things so much different. And I think that's going to come, but that is, of course, going to need more horsepower and more computing power. And that's why I think that because you have the opportunity of having much higher speeds on fiber, I think this is where you should be looking if, in fact, you can't get 5G technology. So I'm Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. I want to thank you so much for watching. So hopefully this will help if you're making trying to make a decision on whether to purchase cable or fiber. Please do that like and subscribe and we'll see you again soon. All right. If there's any questions, we'll take those at the uh, in the Q&A afterwards. Huey, uh I guess you're you're up next. I'll play Do you want me to play your video? Okay. I'll I'll get get that going here. Tech for Seniors present the website of the week with Huey Poplock. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Website of the week number 20. I'm Huey Poplock. Manuals and user guides from manualslive.com. This is what the website looks like. And all you have to do is put in the, the model or the brand or the model number and it will search for the manual that you're looking for. Manuals Live is the biggest place for manuals online. You search, you can download and you can read online. There's 12 million visitors per month. There's over 2,600,000 manuals, 48,000 brands, 5,000 manuals they add per month, and there's over 2,000 categories. Looking for a manual online? Manuals Lib is here to help you save time spent on searching. Their database consists of more than 8 million PDF files and becomes bigger every day. Just enter the keywords in the search field and find what you're looking for. Search results include manual name, description, size, and number of pages. You can either read the manual online or download it to your computer. Moreover, documents can be shared on social networks and they welcome you. There's no registration required. It's 100% free, easy navigation through the manual. You can view and download any manual you want without wasting your time on registration. And what is even better, all their manuals are free to download. Save your time, money, and nerves. With one click, you can find the manual you need. Whether you don't want to spend money on a service technician or your washing machine is beeping, it doesn't matter. Manuals Live will help you with your product without getting on your nerves. Search by a phrase, different manuals, print single pages. If you don't need to print the whole manual, you can print the specific page you need. If you're not looking for the service manual but need installation instructions, they have several manuals and instructions, so you can choose the right one. Discover your product. Do you know that the manual can show you new sides and features of your product? That you can look at specifications of two different chainsaws and decide which one to buy. And you can also find troubleshooting tips, fix your coffee maker, and make your day a little happier.
Here's over 135,000 brand names. First, you can, the major ones are listed here, or you can click on one and go to, say, Samsung, for instance, and you'll see they have a lot, they're in a lot of different categories. Then you can choose the category you're looking at. I chose air conditioners. So now there's a whole bunch of them. They feature some, but there's a listing of all of their different models. We got down to one. This is what it would look like. There are three items in my home that I wanted to use to sample and show you. First of all, I have a refrigerator that was in my unit when I moved in almost 10 years ago. There's also a washer dryer that I bought used just about 10 years ago. And then a laptop that someone let me borrow from 2018. So we'll take a look at all three of those. Here's the refrigerator I have. Here's the, the label that's inside with the model number. I typed in the model number and let's take a look at the demo. I'm on the manuals lib or lib uh, website and I'm going to type in the model number for my refrigerator right in this box. I've typed it in, I click search and it goes out and finds it. Now we've got the install information, dimensions and installation and the energy manual and then at the bottom it has a 32 page manual and that's the one we want so i click it it opens it so we can take a look at it which we're doing here so next we're going to go to the download click download we choose the one we want or it's already chosen for us we hit get it then we have to prove that we're not a robot. We'll skip through this part. Then we say get manual. Now we can either download it or view it in the browser. We're going to download it. It asks where we want to save it. We're going to save it into a particular folder. We can always move it where we keep all of our manuals. And it's downloaded it. And there it is. We can file it away and put it where all our manuals are and we're good to go. This is the washer dryer that I have. There's the label that's on the washer dryer. And so I got the model number from it. I am going to type it in and let's see what we get. Next, we'll do the washer dryer. We'll put in the model of the washer dryer that we have, hit the search. It came right to it. We're looking for the owner's manual. That would be this one. We look to see it looks like it's the right one and we tell it to download. Click on get manual. It wants to prove that we're not a robot and it goes through all of the gyrations and we'll skip that next it wants us to download the pdf we click on it this is what we want we'll hit save and we've downloaded it next we'll open it up and there it is and we've got that manual now in our collection next we'll take a look at the laptop that i have this is a label that's on the outside on the bottom of the laptop that's the laptop from Dell let's do the laptop it is a Dell Inspiron 15 so we're going to put in the part number and do a search and we're getting some things that aren't what we're looking for so let's go ahead and change that to the laptop using the same part number and bingo there we go so it's not an XPS it is an Inspiron so this would be it here there's a setup manual for the 25 and 26 
we'll choose the Inspiron 1525 setup manual 80 pages this is what we got and we're going to tell it to download get the manual prove that we're not a robot get the manual then we have to hit the download the PDF save it open it and there's our setup guide There are two ways to find your manual. The best way is if you know the part number and or manufacturer of your product. And two, if you're not sure of your part number, you can use the catalog. The manuals lib does not represent or have uh, relationships with any of the manufacturers. They are not uh, an online shop, so they cannot sell you anything. They cannot provide hard copies of any manual. Website of the week, number 20, Manuals and User Guides. I'm Huey Poplock. So Huey, usually when I'm about to download it, they want my credit card company or credit card number. You know, that is so cool. It's all free, eh? It's all free and, and just about any manual you're going to need. And, and the best thing to do is, is right now is after this program and after the premiere is go take a look at the label on one of the appliances you have and, and look it up and see if you can find the manual for it. I think you'll find it. Excellent. I know that that's, I know you've looked at it and it is a trusted site, but I'm sure Bob has talked about this a lot before. And, and that is one of the big scam areas because there's so many different sites offering so-called manuals and oftentimes when you get, they get your credit card number, they do bad things with it. It is a, it is a common scam area that people look at when they're trying to find manuals. So Absolutely. this is. Absolutely. And this, yeah. you don't have to. So have bookmark any, this one. You don't have yeah. to give me your name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really great. Thanks. Thanks so much. That's a, that's a, that's a keeper. Uh, all right. Bob, I think you're up. Let's peer into the crystal ball of AI namely Copilot and Gemini, and explore some exciting trends and predictions for the near future. We'll start with Copilot's predictions. Number 1. Customized Chatbots In 2024, tech companies that invested heavily in generative AI will be under pressure to prove that they can make money off their products. To achieve this, AI giants like Google, OpenAI, Meta, and others are betting big on going small. They're developing user-friendly platforms that allow people to customize powerful language models and create their own mini chatbots tailored to specific needs. No coding skills required. These web-based tools democratize generative AI app development, enabling regular folks to tinker with a million little AI models. State-of-the-art AI models, such as GPT-4 and Gemini, are multi-model, meaning they can process not only text, but also images and videos. This new capability could unlock a whole bunch of new apps. For instance, a real estate agent can upload text from previous listings, fine-tune a powerful model to generate similar text with just a click of a button, upload videos and photos of new listings, and simply ask the customized AI to generate a description of the property. Number 2. Scientific Breakthroughs with AI AI and machine learning are poised to transform the scientific method. Large-scale clinical trials, particle colliders, and other important scientific endeavors have traditionally been expensive and time-consuming. With AI, we can expect orders of magnitude of improvements 
in what can be accomplished. AI enables the analysis of enormous data sets, uncovering complex relationships and patterns. Augmenting Human Intelligence AI is primed to unleash a new golden age of scientific discovery in the coming years. Number 3. AI in Foreign Policy Governments worldwide are recognizing the strategic importance of AI. The U.S. Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, has emphasized partnering with innovative AI technology companies to maintain and strengthen global competitiveness. The National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence has detailed recommendations emphasizing the need for the U.S. government to accelerate AI innovation. AI will play a crucial role in economic resilience and geopolitical leadership, making it a pillar of foreign policy. Number 4. Next-Gen Consumer Experiences Buzzworthy concepts like the metaverse and cryptocurrencies will heavily rely on AI. The metaverse in particular presents an inherent AI challenge. Humans lack the perceptual abilities needed to overlay digital objects seamlessly onto physical context or fully understand the range of human actions within a metaverse. As more of our lives intersect the digital and physical realms, AI will be critical in shaping these next-gen consumer experiences. Google's Gemini Advanced also had some predictions to pass along. According to Gemini, here are some feasible predictions on how AI could revolutionize things within the next year. They've focused on areas where AI is already showing promise. Number 1. Enhanced Drug Discovery – How AI Helps AI can analyze massive data sets of molecular structures, genetic information, and existing drug interactions. This allows it to identify potential new drug targets, predict how a molecule will interact within the body, repurpose existing drugs for new conditions. The impact. This could speed up drug development significantly and offer treatments for diseases we currently consider untreatable. Number 2. Hyper-Personalized Learning How AI Helps AI-powered systems can adapt to a student's individual learning style, pace, and knowledge gaps. This includes real-time feedback and adjustments to lessons, providing content in the most effective format, text, video, interactive elements for that student, identifying areas where a student may be struggling early on. The impact. Imagine education that's as unique as each learner. This should improve educational outcomes and make learning a much more engaging and efficient process. Number 3. AI-Powered Medical Diagnosis How AI Helps AI is incredibly good at pattern detection in images. It can be trained on massive libraries of medical scans to detect early signs of disease that a human eye may miss. Analyze tissue samples to diagnose cancer types and their severity. Assist radiologists reducing workloads and improving accuracy. The impact. Earlier detection of serious diseases faster diagnosis, and reduce strain on overworked medical professionals. Number 4. Revolutionizing Scientific Research How AI Helps AI can aid researchers in 
analyzing massive scientific data sets to identify patterns humans can't easily see, designing new experiments and simulations, automating time-consuming lab tasks. The impact this could accelerate discoveries in fields like materials science, climate modeling, and potentially even theoretical physics. Challenges and considerations Data quality AI relies on massive amounts of high-quality data. Creating and curating these data sets is a massive undertaking. Bias it's vital to ensure AI systems are trained on diverse data to avoid biased outcomes, especially in areas like medicine. Ethics As AI becomes more powerful, we need careful ethical guidelines for its use, ensuring it benefits society responsibly. Stay safe, stay secure, and remember these predictions are based on current trends and technological advancements. But the future is always full of surprises. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye, and thanks for watching and listening. Next, we're going to take a look at a new enjoyment that'll be there very quickly. Links on a website are helpful because they lead you to additional information. The problem is if you're on one website and you want to follow a link on a different website, you have to leave the website you currently are visiting. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just hover over a link and a preview window of that website opens and you can then take a look and see what's on that website. Guess what? That feature is currently available as an experiment on Chrome and many of the Chromium-based browsers. Let me show you how to enact it and how to use it. Let's go to a fresh tab. I am using Chrome for this demonstration. Type in Chrome colon forward slash forward slash flags and select that address. Once this opens, we're looking for preview. So type that in on the search box. And what we're interested in is the bottom one, which says link preview. When enabled, Link Preview feature gets to be available to preview a link page in a dedicated small window before navigating to that linked page. So it's not opening up that website, it just gives you a preview of it. You can't do anything within that preview window, but you get to look at that website. It's set to default. We want to change this enable it and once you enable it you have to relaunch the browser so let's do that now we're now back on the original website that i'm using for a demonstration again that same link if you do a right click on that link you'll now see something that says preview link you can select it and it opens up the preview of that website Select it and then you can scroll through and see what's on that website. You cannot interact. The links on here are not active, but you get to see what's on the website. One other way to reach that, hold down your Alt key and then hover over that link. And again, it opens up the preview window and you can scroll through it and see what's on the website. So you have a choice, either do a right click on it and then select the preview or hold down the Alt key and hover your mouse on that link. It will open up the preview window. I hope that helps. Put it to use. This works on many, not all of the Chromium based browsers. Stay safe, stay secure. Thanks for watching and listening.
Well, that's that's really interesting. And he made that using clips, <laughs> right? Yep. And I have to run. So we'll, we'll follow we'll, this on Thursday. For and me. We'll, we'll, we'll see your video. We'll look forward to your video next week. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bob. All right. For those of you over on uh, YouTube, we want to say thank you for coming. Please, please don't forget. We have a... Um, premier educational video coming up at half past the hour i put the link in the in the chat and don't forget that we have uh, a show on thursday so hopefully we'll see you again if not we'll see you back the same time same place next week all right ray i'll just uh, stop the uh, live stream and take it away Bruce Springsteen, also known as The Boss. So he was born in New Jersey in 1949, and he's had a singing career, when you consider it now, over six decades with his fellow musicians, the E Street Band. This started in 1973 with the release of his first two albums, but it was born to run two years later that cemented his place in rock and roll history. And then the release of Born in the USA in 1984 became one of his best-selling albums of all time, with sales in excess of 30 million copies worldwide. From that LP, Dancing in the Dark was the biggest hit, reaching number two on the Billboard singles chart. Here's an interesting tidbit. In 1988, the East German government invited Springsteen to perform, hoping it would placate their youth who wanted to hear more music from the West. Many feel the overwhelming success of the concert was a contributing factor to the fall of the Berlin Wall the following year. Now, I chose to focus on Bruce Springsteen today thanks to a birthday gift my sister Sue sent me pictured above, and there it is. And it's the, the words and lyrics to the song, If I Should Fall Behind. You can imagine that with us being almost 16 years apart in age, our musical tastes are different. However, her all-time favorite singer is Bruce, and one of my favorite love songs was written and first performed by Springsteen. It also doesn't hurt that my favorite singer, Dion, also did a rendition of If I Should Fall Behind. So today's video clip is from, the 2000, is from 2013 at the Stand Up For Heroes annual event that raises funds and awareness for veterans, service members, and their families. The duet is with Bruce's wife, Patty Scafia. They have been married since 1991. And you may be hearing now Bruce being seen a little different than you might normally expect. There you go. Well done, Ray. Well done. Well done. Good, good. Excellent. Excellent selection. And remember, Ray, do you want to just remind everybody that they can send the information into you if they want to make a selection? Absolutely. Remember last week, and Diane is here today, Binda, she suggested a local group that she knew uh, that she wanted to focus on. Uh, we did her presentation, and I'm open to anybody else that knows singers locally that maybe aren't world-known or even nationwide known, but you think they're good. And if you can send me the information, I can do what I did for, for Di last week and make that same kind of presentation in the future. Thanks, Ray. That's excellent. So remember that, everyone. If you have any ideas, be sure and pass them on to Ray. He'd be more than happy to, to, to make a presentation up for us. That'd be great. Now, I want to thank everyone for coming. If you have to run, that's, that's okay. Just remember that at half past the hour, we have uh, our special educational video that will be played. I've already, I've put the, the link in the chat and it's also in the uh, in our Saturday newsletter. And we also have a playlist of just the educational series that once you uh, save that link, which we've talked about before, you'll just automatically, it, it'll be updated and it'll be there for you. Don't forget this Thursday, we have our Thursday show, of course, on Thursday. <laughs> and and it'll, we will have all the tech news of the week and including some new, uh, new, um, new news items that will be coming up. Also, the following week uh, will be Apple's big reveal. It'll be their big, big announcement, and we'll see what all the new Apple stuff that's coming up. So if you have, now, if you have any questions, uh, 
about the show today. If you have anything, this is the time to ask if you want, uh, well, it's still fresh in your memory. Any of the presenters, if you have any questions for the presenters, uh, anything about the technology we've talked about, please just put up your hand and we'll attempt to answer them. And here he's got his hand up already. I certainly do. A couple of notes in the chat from Sharon Beckus. She said she's been using uh, manuals lib for a few years. And for me, download the manuals and add info or markup to the download phone number, uh, the product, my date of purchase, and serial numbers. So I have it uh, to call if it's uh, already on my guide. So she keeps that information right there. And then if a guide is not in the manuals lib, she contacts the vendor, reviews their website for the manual. If not, there's an email. Uh, let's see. There's uh, She emails the vendor and requests a manual to be emailed to her. So the vendors have been great about that. So if it's not in there at Manuals Live, you might want to contact and get a copy of it and add it to your group. You, I think most most yeah. things I'm buying now don't come with manuals. They just give you the the link to the online manual that the company has. Isn't that? Do you, you find know, the same and, thing? And a lot of them are, are so small you can't read them. Right. Or a lot of them are QR codes. Just click the QR code yeah, and yeah, it, to the manual. Yeah, yeah. So if you can, you might be able to get those. So you, if it's a, a PDF, you can enlarge it and print the enlarge to be able to read it. Right. Well, that's a good use of photography, you know. You can take a picture of that thing and make it look bigger. <laughs> I mean, to, me, that's, to me, that's just yeah. a little lazy. I'd rather put the information right on the manual. Yeah. Interesting. Well, there we go. Murray, any comments? Well, just the one uh, about your um, uh, thing about the fiber where I live. First of all, if I can't get coverage to my home, even though I'm in right downtown, Victoria. And secondly, their deal, their best deal, can't even come close to touching what I've already got with the uh, cable company. Yeah, you probably have a contract because you're living in some sort of some sort of managed care, is it? Or they probably have a have a deal. But it, but it is it is it is it depends on what the competition is, right? It depends on what's happening and 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 what services you want. You 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 need to. What I keep telling everyone is this is the time in life where you need to shop around. Mm -hmm. Keep shopping is you're going to get a better deal. So yeah, well, here the choices really tell us or now Rogers and the, the, the um, tell us. Uh, I, I guess maybe I'm grandfathered into something through the former TELUS, but basically what's the killer for me is that uh, for the, the service is that my mobile is absolutely free and there's nothing that TELUS can offer that will give me free mobile with unlimited calling to Canada and the United States. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Keep, 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 keep looking. Steve, go ahead. Hey, um, Huey, that PDF for the Dell laptop. Can you have a look through it and see if it includes schematics? Um, not easily right now. Do you know? Do you know if they do? I don't remember. They usually don't do. That would be in a service manual rather than the user manual, but that may be available as well. Okay. All right. Drew, go ahead. Yep, I'm actually, uh, I have to do some work in my garage first, but I'm going to be perhaps one of the few people that's going to be using two different cable companies, one for TV and one for internet. <laughs> I have both going through Comcast right now, and I am a longtime TiVo customer, and they have cable cards that's tied into Comcast, and I really don't want to move them off if I can. So I'm going to probably leave my TV with Comcast, and then uh, my internet is going to go through uh, Fios, so I can have a good inter good internet and lower pricing. Right. So it's it, it's interesting, Drew, because when I, one of the medical clinics I owned, I set up for one year. You can actually have two. You could have cable and fiber, and you can have it set up to one router. 
and that will dynamically choose which which at that particular second is faster and it will switch you from one service to the other so that it will always keep you at a top speed and that's that's an amazing amazing technology so you actually have your cable and fiber plugged into this box and it actually pulls each service and switches you to the fastest all and it's working all the time at that it, it, and it was but it was extremely expensive and now with the the services really pretty rock solid it 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 didn't bear the we, i used yeah. it for a year and then it just wasn't it wasn't worth the extra cost but it was pretty cool technology well comcast can't compete with fios for you know I, I, you can't get symmetrical upload speeds um and they have a data cap I, in florida here I don't know about everywhere, but I'm limited to one terabyte of transfers per month. And I'm down to, for this month, my last 200 megabytes of transfer load before I run out of my terabyte. And it makes it difficult to do backups to the right. internet and watch media coming down when you have a one terabyte limit. Is that with Comcast? Is a terabyte with Comcast? Yeah. It's a limiting, huh? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Just another reason to get rid of Comcast. <laughs> All right. Sharon, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to thank Ron. I had no idea why you excluded on the YouTube part of the show presentation, why you didn't allow them to hear the Q&A. I had no idea about that. So finally, I got the courage to email Ron, and Ron explained to me it's because of copyright. So not being a YouTube creator... I wouldn't have known this. So I thank you for that information because it, it it turned something from a negative to a positive for me. So thank you. Yeah, we weren't just being mean. We yeah, were, I thought you were yeah. being mean. I really <laughs> we, did. We weren't really <laughs> being mean. We were just being it's just it's just we tried that that we 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 had to had to figure that out. And it was it was pretty, you know, in the very early stages of five years ago when we first started, uh, I remember I played a little clip. I don't know if you remember. It was on. Um, it was one of the musicals, and there was a there was going to be a free, free concert, and I wanted to let everyone know. And I played a little video clip of Phantom of the Opera, you know, on our show. And man, YouTube clobbered me over that. It was it was really really they they you know. And so it's very early on. I realized that you you got to be careful what it is. So that's why we do it because everything else we create ourselves, right? But but in those situations, we're using other people's music. Yeah, I had no idea. So thanks. Okay, Ray, go ahead. Yeah, that's true. The the, the bots are out there all the time, and no matter even a microsecond of music, they seem yeah. to. They able to it. capture it right away. My question is for Yui on the manuals lib. I really like that presentation. Now, most of us know that brand new cars today no longer give you the manual. First of all, the manual is now like 650 pages. Uh, so they don't give you the manual anymore. It's part of the infotainment system. So Yui, if I wanted to get an owner's manual for a new car, do you think that it'll be available on manuals lib? I would, I would say so, yes. Because when you showed that list, I couldn't look at it quickly, but I was looking alphabetical for the word Ford for my car, and I didn't see it. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure they're there. And and you can just type it in and see. All right, I'll give it a try later. Thank you. So, Ray, the manual for my new Toyota RAV4 plug-in hybrid is 980 pages <laughs> and four volumes. And oh, four volumes. Oh, and an addendum. And an addendum. Is that I English, Spanish, so and 20 million languages? How many languages is it? Well, I was in English. I, I didn't wow. know. I'm sure, I'm sure it's in French, different. of course. But, but I think, oh, my gosh, you know, what is yeah. going on? With that? So, and, you know, and every I, page is litigation. It says we're not, you know, almost every other page yeah. has a, a disclaimer of sorts. So, you know what I do, Ray? I don't ever read the manual. I just search YouTube, and I say, <laughs> show me how to work the air conditioner in my 2024 RAV4. <laughs> Someone's done a video on it. I just watched the video. I didn't. I haven't looked at the manual at all. So it's <laughs> it's it's that's what I do. But I thought that was smart with the companies now. Rather than producing these voluminous manuals, it's just in your infotainment system. Yeah, crazy. Murray, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just going to comment on the copyright. I uh, recorded a church service way back when and put it out on YouTube and got clobbered. It was for copyright for the 
for the song Jesus Loves Me, which has been out, which has oh, been in the public domain for over 75 years. Yeah. I had to fight with them before I could get back, could have be unlocked, but it was real well, battle. Did you, you win or lose? I won, but because I could prove that it was a public domain. Okay. Well, do you, does anyone remember? I, I made a video about the portal TV, the port that portal device I put on top of my TV. I made a video about that, and at the back, and and while I was recording the video, an NFL game was playing in the background, which it recorded in the background the NFL oh, game, no. and when we published that video, it got clobbered again. I got you know a notice from YouTube. You can't do that. NFL had a strike. It was it was. Um, against me and it it was it they just running it in the background is a problem so i didn't even show it so it's it's really crazy so you got to be super careful right here we go ahead yeah i i just look up quickly i typed in ford and it had something with ford maverick in it uh, and it had like 20 pages i didn't see anything else so automobile i don't know and then somebody asked in the chat what about software manuals? And I just looked up Photoshop and Photoshop Elements, and their their manuals are there. So some may be there, maybe not all of it. Okay, Carl, go ahead. Yeah, my uh, manuals for my seven twenty seventeen Chevrolet is four volumes. Each volume is eight hundred pages, <laughs> and and it was at least that many hundreds of dollars too. I don't remember anymore. At least four hundred. But it also said it came with it. It's also available on USB. And I was trying to think it must be compressed files to put 2,400 pages with photos, you know, graphics and everything. Right. So that's all I wanted to say. It's pretty heavy. I didn't weigh it, but it's, <laughs> you can't carry it with one hand. But I can't back imagine back. anybody reading that. I mean, even trying to find, and it's it's sort of indexed okay, but a lot of times when you're trying to find something, you don't know what section to look in. And it just it's just such a big manual, it's crazy. So I as I said, I do the YouTube thing. Just ask YouTube. They all know. They know that someone's made well, a video about it. So well, and, yeah. Each each volume is, you know, electrical and then uh you know, the frame and engine, and so it is, and you know, the media center, they are somewhat organized and there is a pretty good uh, the index in the back is like 40 pages yeah well i just typed in kia in it and i'm seeing several manuals in the 600 page so oh. some some might be in there so yeah. you need to check i will so it just cer for, cer just certainly would make it a lot easier to search uh yeah. with the pdf file than it would be in the book itself for those of you who saw the Saturday newsletter, I put in my section on the channel that I liked the best. You know, I have that channel section. Um, was was it was about cooking, but it was about all the Costco cuts of meat when you buy the bigger, large, like top round or whatever you're buying, and how to cut them and cook them. It's it's so if you haven't seen it, it's a it's a great. It's all about the Costco cuts and how to how to how to how to cut them up and how to cook them. So it's a very interesting video. Have a look at that one. All right, we're about ready to roll. Any any last minute questions? Any quickies that we can deal with? If not, we'll see everybody back next week. Huey's going to be looking after the shop next week, uh, so that will be so he'll be on deck, and uh, I will. I'll be back the following week. Any? I guess we've answered all the questions. All right. Yep. 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 Good. We we're, we're, we have answered them all. So all right. So anyway, everyone have a great great week. Don't forget our premiere video coming up at half past the hour, and we'll see everybody back same time, same place. And we really do appreciate you watching and coming and listening. Thank you so much, and thank you, thank you, Huey, thank you, Ray, thanks, Chris and Jim, thanks. Uh, Bob, well, I guess Bob, but he's not here. He's last. But thanks, thanks so much for all Bob's work he did this week. He put a lot of work into it. So anyway, we'll we'll see you back next week. Bye now. Bye everybody. Mm -hmm.